Hi guys, um, let's do the muscular system lecture. Um, so today we will be working in unit three, the muscular system. And I just wanted to kind of bring to light the, um, the PowerPoint is right here um, in module five right now. So here is the PowerPoint we'll be going through. And here is right there. And here is the lecture notes. And then this recording will be right underneath it. So um, if you're not in class or you need to review uh, the lecture that we did in class, um, here's the PowerPoint, here's the lecture notes, and then the recording, this recording will be right underneath there. So. All right, well, let's go over the, um, the notes first. So first you see here are some terms to know, um, and I will go through these during the lecture, um, but they are terms you should know uh, for the muscular system. And if I don't go through all of them, we'll circle back around and we'll come back to the notes at the end. Uh, scrolling down, you can ignore the respiratory system for right now there. Um, there's a little bit of the um, skeletal system there from last unit. Um, and then you have all the words that I'll be saying to you uh, during the lecture are written. So we try to give them in uh, several different forms to you guys verbally, um, in writing. And then we try to do hands-on activities. So here are... Um, those lecture notes that just seem to repeat themselves right there for a second. Huh, interesting. All right, uh, then we go on to um, the movement and the um, muscles, the three types of muscles. We'll talk about those as you go through the lecture. You should uh, fill those in, the descriptions of them. And then uh, we'll talk about the movement, the muscle movement, and how to remember those. Um, and then we'll be using colored pencils in class to label and color in each of the muscles here of the dog. Uh, we'll be doing some, um, some of the same muscles um, in the rabbit, but some different. All right, and then uh, types of muscles here. That's uh, the part where you would fill in those notes up above. Uh, here are just some slides. Um, so these are the labeled types of muscles that we would be labeling um, in those notes up above. Uh, here are the actual slides we'll be going through um, for the lecture. Some of the slides did not copy very well, but they are in the PowerPoint that's in the unit um, and you should be able to see those. So. Um, all the slides that we're going to be going over um, are in your notes. So I just wanted to make sure that we went through your notes beforehand. Um, and so you are set with those and we've looked at them. So now we're going to click on uh, the PowerPoint. I have it set up down here. And we're going to get right into the lecture. Maybe if I click things. All right, so the muscular system. The muscular system are organs um, that contract to produce a movement. So when one muscle is contracting, another muscle is relaxing. Um, so they work in pairs. Um, one muscle contracts, the other relaxes. Muscles are responsible for the following ambulation. That just means to move. Uh, control of organs and tissues. So. Um, uh, the organs that uh, are made of smooth muscle are the digestive system, and they use peristalsis, that wave-like movement, uh, to move um, food through the digestive system. Pumping of blood, so that is our heart and the cardiac muscle, um, and generation of heat. So when we're working out or we're moving quickly uh, to get things done, the muscle movement generates heat. So if you are cold, a lot of times your body will start to shiver. Well, those are those muscles moving um, to generate some heat to, to warm you up. So 
If you ever get cold, you know, start moving around, get those muscles going, um, and that generates heat. So horses, when we turn them out into the pasture in the wintertime, we always throw them. I say throw them some flakes of hay. Um, their digestive system keeps them warm. Uh, moving around keeps them warm. So um, the muscular system can be a nice source of um, heat. Um, muscles are made up of long, slender cells called the muscle fibers. Uh, we'll talk more about this in a video, the function of the muscles video. You'll have uh, an assignment to do and answer some questions in Schoology. So uh, that's where you'll get some more information about that. Each muscle consists of a group of muscle fibers, um, and it's in a fibrous sheath. So um, as we're dissecting the animals, you'll see that the muscles are kind of um, separated by a thin layer of kind of fascia, um, and they are in a uh, fibrous sheath. Um, so myo and uh, fibro and fibrous. Myo um, is the combining form for muscle. So if you see that in um, some terms and as you learn um, the medical terminology um, you will see myo that means muscle fibro fibrous is the com combining form for fibrous tissue there are uh, three types of muscles so um, again muscles are contra contractile organs uh, responsible for voluntary and involuntary movements in animals. So voluntary movements is you walking quickly, you're using those muscles, you're reaching for something. Um, and then involuntary movements are those we don't think about. So the digestive th system, um, the peristalsis, we don't think about digesting our food. So those are involuntary movements of the muscular system. So the three types are skeletal system. They uh, allow for all the voluntary movement appears to be striated under the microscope. So we did that activity in um, animal anatomy and um, no, animal science and technologies, the first semester course, um, where we looked at the muscle fibers under the microscopes and you guys drew them on that activity. Um, so they have a striated look under the microscope. And I think we have some pictures of that in some later slides. We also, uh, the skeletal muscles, a lot of them that we'll be identifying um, are skeletal muscles um, in the cat and then the ones that we color um, in, in these notes for the dog. The cardiac muscles uh, controls involuntary beating of the heart. So we don't think about our heart beating. Um, it just does it. It's involuntary, appears striated on, under a microscope, and the cardiac muscle is only found in the heart. Then we have smooth muscle. They are responsible for all other uh, involuntary movements such as breathing, digestion, that peristalsis, that wave-like movement that moves the food through the digestive system, blinking, uh, the bladder is, is um, made of smooth muscle um, so that it can expand and then contract um, when the animal urinates. Here are those muscle fibers that we were talking about that appear uh, to be striated um, under the microscope. So if you remember back in last semester when we looked at these um, under the microscopes, there are those striations that it's talking about. All right, so here are some others as well. So we have um, striated muscles um, at the top with the cardiac muscle, again, that is striated similar to the skeletal muscle and then we have the smooth muscle at the bottom um, that is not striated and doesn't have those striations um, under the microscope that we see. Structures associated with uh, muscles so that we talked a little bit about that fascia layer. Um, it is a sheet of fibrous connection connective tissue that covers, supports, and separates the muscles. So as you're dissecting your rabbits, um, I tend to use my fingers a lot more than I use um, instruments so that I can feel 
those fascia layers, those separations, and then I can separate out the different muscles that we're dissecting. So I can see um, the deltoid and the the biceps and the triceps um, and the uh, latissimus dorsi. Um, those are muscles that we will start dissecting. So I, I tend to use my fingers so that I can feel um, those those muscles and the fibrous uh, sheets and the separation of the muscles. Structures associated with the muscles again, um, you have those fibrous uh, sheets give it, that gives the attachment to the muscle fibers and uh, serves, um, so there's always an or origin and an insertion of the, the flat muscles. Um, then we have cartilage. So cartilage is a form of connective tissue that is more elastic than bone. So cartilage is in our nose and in our ears. Um, so those are kind of uh, connective tissue that's more elastic than bone. Um, and um, yeah. Uh, articular cartilage is the type of cartilage that covers the surface um, of a bone, uh, usually at a joint. Um, the meniscus is a, a curved fibrous cartilage found in the same joint. Um, it provides some additional um, cushing. We have the meniscus in our knee. Um, uh, dogs have it like in their hock area and that hind leg. Um, horses in the stifle area um, of that hind leg. So that meniscus is the curved fibrous cartilage found um, in some joints. And articular cartilage um, is the type of cartilage that covers um, a joint surface. Joints are connection between bones. Um, they're also no called articulations. Um, the word joint, arthur, um, is, uh, means joint. So when we start diving into medical terminology, you'll start making those connections as we talk, um, about different, uh, terms and diseases and stuff like that. Um, so Arthur, art, joint. Joints are classified as being, um, based on the degree of movement um, synarthrosis, uh, immovable joints, so those do not move, Am amphia, uh, arthrosis, um, a slightly movable joint, um, and diatherosis is a freely movable joint. So our, our ankles, um, the tarsal bones and the carpal bones are freely movable, um, other, our knee, uh, and they they are somewhat movable. They they don't go um, a certain way. You can only stretch them, uh, move them so far, and then they do stop, or they're supposed to stop. Uh, ligaments are bands of fibrous connective tissue that connects um, one bone to another. So it's bone, ligament, bone, bone, ligament, bone, um, and that's what connects. Uh, fibrous uh, tissue that connects one bone to another, and those are ligaments. Then we have tendons, and tendons are bands of fibrous connective tissue that connects muscle to bone. So muscle, tendon, bone, muscle to bone, muscle, tendon, bone. Um, so those connect, tendons connect muscle to bone. Um, some muscle terms, uh, kinesis um, means movement, um, kinesiology is the study of movement, um, anti means against, agon uh, means struggle, so um, we always have one muscle that is moving against the other, so um, if one muscle is uh, flexing, the other is relaxing. Um, and that is they, they move together, they work together. Antagonist muscle works against or opposite the other muscle. 
Sign means together. Erg means to work. Uh, synergist muscles work um, with other muscles to produce um, movement. So sign, so you're kind of breaking down the terms now, um, and this will help you as you get into medical terminology, and it will actually help you as you move on and with, you know, maybe some health problems of other people you know or yourself, you can start to break down those terms and, and really understand what's going on. All right, naming muscles, um, muscle movement terms. So we have abductor, so abductor. And I say it like that because it's hard to distinguish when you say abductor and adductor. Um, it's, it's hard to hear the difference between the B and the D, and they mean two different things. So I always say abductor and um, to be abducted by aliens um, and your arms kind of move away from the midline. So that is abduction. When your, when your appendages move or the animal's appendages move away from the midline, it's abduction. So to be abducted by aliens. And then adduction, so adductor, um, is those appendages or those limbs move closer to the midline. So they are getting closer to that midline. Um, so if a dog or a horse stands with their legs close together, um, that's abduction. Um, so bringing it, so adding it to the body, bringing it closer to that midline. So adding it to the body, a deduction. Flexor, again, is bringing the distal portion. That's why we learned our directional terminology first. It's bringing the distal portion closer to um, the midline of the, the body. And then flexor, so that's extending the, the distal portion of your body goes away from the midline. Elevator is to raise, depressor is to lower, uh, rotator is to rotate the limb, uh, supinator um, is to kind of turn up, um, and pronator is, is to turn down. Um, so when you're supinate, supination to turn up, pronation is kind of to turn down or away. So those are kind of um, those, those muscle names. Those are in your medical terminology, and we have some questions um, for you to go through. Um, and there are some pictures and stuff in that medical terminology workbook. Um, and we have some questions to go through to review those terms. All right, so location of terms. Um, pectorals are found in the check, chest. Um, intercostal muscles, inter means between, cost means ribs, so in between uh, the ribs. Um, so a lot of times um, the, the name of the muscle um, kind of tells you where it's at. Uh, biceps femoris, biceps femoris goes across where the femur is. So if you know the skeletal system, you understand the um, the muscular system. So they give us clues as to where they're at or where they're going. Uh, latissimus dorsi is another one that runs across the, the side of the animal's back. So we learn, or a side of the animal uh, to the back. So we learn that ladder means side and dorsal means back. So latissimus dorsi runs on the side of the animal towards its back, latissimus dorsi. Muscle fiber um, directional terms, rectus, um, oblique, transverse, um, and sphincter. So sphincters uh, are circular. Um, oblique means at an angle. Um, and then number of muscle division types. So biceps broken up into two, triceps broken up into three, quadriceps, there's four. So um, by, tri, and quad, by meaning two, tri meaning three, and then quad meaning four. Um, then you have um, muscle size. So we have minimus and maximus. 
Um, so minimus would be a smaller, maximus usually is larger. Major um, usually means uh, cranial or anterior muscle, whereas minor means uh, a muscle that's maybe um, more caudal. Uh, latissimus dorsi, um, so we talked about latissimus is on um, the side, long, long isthmus, long isthmus, so longer than it is wide. Um, the muscle shape, um, so deltoid, and then quadra, uh, quadra, quadra, okay, quadratus, and then rom, rom, I'm just going to struggle. Uh, so you know uh, when you're learning in math um, about a rhombus, um, so those uh, those shapes that we've learned in math, you thought, when am I ever going to use this? Well, here you go. Um, so those help us to um, with the, the shapes of the muscles. All right, moving on um, to uh, the dog and the shapes of the and the different muscles here. So we'll just bring them all up and then we'll talk about them. All right, so one of the first muscles that we're going to dissect is the masseter muscle, and it's the circular muscle of the cheek. Um, so in dogs and cats, um, they have. Um, a circular kind of bigger muscle, masseter muscle. Uh, the rabbit still has a larger, stronger masseter muscles. Rabbits are um, constant uh, grazers, just like horses. And so they are, are constantly chewing and eating. They need to keep that digestive system, you know, full and they're, they're eating grass and haze and different things. So they're constantly using that masseter muscle. So those, that's one of the first ones, um, that we'll use. Masseter muscle helps with, helps the animal with mastication, which is chewing. Then we have the brachiocephalicus muscle. So the brachiocephalicus muscle starts in the back um, behind the ears, kind of towards the pole of the animal, and then comes down and inserts um, at the front part of the front leg. So it's that whole muscle there that kind of comes down, starts um, up behind the ears and the neck area, and then inserts um, at the front of the front leg. Then we have the deltoid muscle there that has to do um, with, with raising up that front leg. Uh, you have the triceps brachii um, that is in the elbow region of that front leg. If we go back up, we have the uh, tri uh, triceps or the triceps trapezius muscle, and the trapezius muscle is actually shaped like a triangle. If I could get triangle there. Um, so you can see that triangular shape of the trapezius muscle. I talked about the latissimus dorsi muscle there. So you can see that side muscle that goes across the side. So that's your lat means side. And then dorsi, dorsal means back. So it runs across the side up into the back. It's a very thin muscle. Um, some, sometimes you guys miss it because it is so thin. You, you kind of cut through it and you don't realize it's a, it's a, a muscle at all. We talked about intercostal muscles. Um, they are the, the muscles between the ribs. I like mine with barbecue sauce, um, so some of you may too. Um, but inter means between, and then cost, costal means ribs. So the intercostals are the muscles between the ribs. You also have the pectoral muscles. Those are the muscles of the chest on the ventral aspect of the animal. So we're using some directional terminology. So you got to bring all that stuff that we've taught you, you got to bring it with you. We have the external abdominal oblique muscles. So oblique goes at an angle. Um, the external abdominal oblique muscles of the dog and cat aren't tremendously strong, but in horses and cows, those are hefty muscles because they have to hold up that whole digestive system that they have and or um, if it's a female, any fetuses that they may have. So in ex external abdominal oblique muscles are pretty hefty in those herbivores like um, 
cows and and horses those larger ones but they're they aren't as they don't need to be as significant in in our smaller animals like dogs and cats uh, gluteals are high up um, kind of towards the tail head there um, in the hind leg then you have the semitendinosus muscles and um, then underneath those semitendinosus are semimembranosus muscles. So semi, semitendinosus are on top. Membranosus is kind of in the middle there. Um, it's not shown here. Um, but those are um, areas where we give um, some vaccinations in large animals. Um, we can hit um, hit the muscle um, to give IM injections in that hind leg. Um, so that's a common place for that. You can see there biceps femoris. Um, so when I talked about if you know the skeletal system, you also know um, the muscular system. So that is where the femur runs underneath the biceps femoris. Um, so if you remember the skeletal system, well, you have a clue for the muscular system. And then gastronemius. So gastronemius, gaster means stomach. So what would a muscle named after the stomach be doing in the hind leg? Well, the reason is, is the gastronemius muscle rep is like the same shape of a monogastric stomach. So a monogastric stomach found in a dog, cat, humans, pig, um, it's the same shape as the gastronemius muscle. So that's how it got its name. Um, gaster does mean stomach. So it, it really has nothing to do with where the stomach is. It just um, resembles the shape of a monogastric stomach. And it is actually kind of the calf muscle um, for us and, um, and cats and stuff. So gastronemius muscle in the hind leg the reason it got its name is because it's shaped like a monogastric um, stomach. So, all right, we will be coloring those in class. So if you miss um, the lecture in class and the notes, you may want to um, color in your notes with some colored pencils and label those muscles. All right, um, so that is it for um, our lecture. Um, let me go back and just look at the, the terms and make sure I got everything. Um, abdominal oblique muscles, flat muscles, support the digestive system. We talked about that. Abduction goes away from the midline. Adduction, adding it to the midline. Your agonist is going to be your primary mover of the joint. Um, ambulation means to move. Um, antagonist is the opposing um, movement. So when you're moving appendages, if animals are moving their 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 legs, um, one mus muscle is contracting, the other is relaxing. Um, they move as pairs. Um, extension and flexion. So you're moving the distal portion away from the midline when you're extending and flexing, you're moving the distal portion towards uh, the animal's midline. We talked about tendons connecting uh, muscle to bone, and then ligaments connect um, bone to bone. We talked about the three types of muscles, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth, and where they're located and how they appear under the microscope. All right, I think we're good. So um, if you missed the lecture, make sure you fill in those notes, um, color the muscles um, so we can get ready to dissect. So as, as always, if you have any questions, um, just ask. Thanks, guys. Bye.